Hi, and welcome back to the CG Bros. It's good to see you again. This is Brother Damien, and in this session, I'm going to show you how to create a complex and very cool dynamic in class simulation using any polygonal object. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Recently, I was asked to create a couple effects. One of a layer of paint peeling off the surface of a car as it screams around a track, and another was for creating an ocean of animated tiles. Normally, I might create these kind of effects using particles with instance geometry attached to them, with some simple expressions controlling the transforms and other behaviors. Or, instead of using standard particles, I might use end particles, because they offer a much higher level of control due to additional functionality like stickiness, lift, and a host of mappable attributes. And while end particles could take me a long way there, they're often quite unpredictable, and might not give me the physical behavior that I'm looking for. I'm going to show you the simple, yet little known technique that I use to complete both of them, on time and on budget. Oh yeah, and looking good. Now, I know you'll find it useful for doing all sorts of different effects. So first, be sure you're working in centimeters by hitting the Animation Preferences button and coming down here to the settings. Let's also set the frame range of our animation to 300 frames. Now you want to start by creating a polygon plane by coming up to the Polygon menu over to Create Polygon Plane. Let's go ahead and set it to 25 units by 25 units. We'll also subdivide the plane by 200x and 200y. Now this gives us a plane with 40,000 square faces. That's a pretty high resolution. And some of you may get a warning message. Go ahead and go for it. Or you can always use fewer subdivisions, it just won't be as cool. We're using a polyplane for simplicity's sake, but keep in mind that you can use this technique on any polygon mesh, and I'll show you an example of this later. But remember, the higher the subdivisions, the longer your simulation will take to complete. Now the next thing we need to do is separate the faces in our polyplane, because instead of simulating the entire plane as a single cloth object, we're going to simulate each of the faces in our end cloth mesh individually. I find finding the delicate balance between simplicity and performance is always a real challenge. That's where the fun lies in creating good looking, efficient effects. And that's why I really like this approach. Select the polyplane and right click to enter component selection mode and select vertex or edges. Either one will work fine for this. Now drag a selection around all the vertices or edges in the polyplane. Then come up to the polygon menu set and over to edit mesh and down to detach component. Now, this may take a couple seconds. You should now have 40,000 faces separated within your single polyplane object. Now the mesh is now ready to convert into an end cloth object. So with the mesh selected, under the end dynamics menu set, come over to end mesh pull down and select create end cloth. Ordinarily, trying to simulate 40,000 end cloth objects or more would be next to impossible. So we need to make a couple of very important optimizations. So with the end cloth object selected, in the attribute editor, under the collisions tab, uncheck self collision and collisions. By turning off collisions, you're maximizing the efficiency of the end cloth solver and tapping into some performance that might surprise you. Now, this will allow the end cloth pieces to simulate dynamically while ignoring each other and other objects in the scene. Now, if you would like them to interact with other objects in the scene, just leave collisions on, but the self collide off. And keep in mind that doing this will come at a price at simulation time. Now let's go over to the nucleus node and make sure we set the gravity to zero because I want the squares to stay in place and only be affected by fields that we'll be adding to the scene later. Well, let's do that now. So with our end cloth selected, come up to Fields and create a volume field. Now we'll use it to influence the motion of the faces using directional and internal turbulence settings. Now I like using the volume axis fields because they're very efficient and it's like getting several fields for the price of one. And under the volume control attributes, let's go ahead and set the volume shape to sphere. Now the exact settings for your volume axis field are going to vary depending on the type of effect you're trying to create. I'd like you to go ahead and follow the settings that I'm giving you just as a starting point. Let's go ahead and set the magnitude to 1 with an attenuation, a fancy word for fall off, set to 0 0.001 because I just want a hair of fall off. We come down to volume speed attributes and set a long axis to 5, which will force the squares up in Y a little bit. Let's go ahead and set the turbulence to 1, the turbulence speed to 0 0.1, and turbulence frequency uh, or size to 4 across the board. Be sure to set everything else to 0. Now scale it out and position it as you wish. I'm going to go ahead and rotate mine 45 degrees in Y. And scale it out wide enough to encompass the whole plane object at its widest point. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a break here. I'll see you in part two where we'll animate our field using a couple keyframes and a